All right, chances are, if you wanna rank on the first page of Google, you probably think you need a huge domain authority. But in this video, I'm gonna show you how I ranked a brand new niche site on the first page of Google with a DA of just one. Wanna know how I did it? Let's get started. All right, so just to give a little context of what we're talking about in this video, earlier this year, I set up a brand new niche site for my students of Niche Site Academy, just to show them as a proof of concept how I like to set up my sites. So I threw eight articles up on the site just to show examples of how I like to do my articles and I just let it sit there in Google for months and months and months, okay? Eight articles, that's it. Hit publish, let them sit there and didn't do anything else with the site. Now, fast forward several months later and I was just checking in on some of the keyword rankings for those posts that we had published originally. And I noticed that for one of the articles we published for its main keyword, it was already ranking on page one of Google. And so I can show you what that keyword is, okay? The keyword we were going after was best chassis paint, right? So this is a car site. And you can see one, two, three, four, five, six. This is my site right here, best Chassis Paint, ranking number six, right? My site here is carrepairlab.com. All right, and you wanna know the crazy thing about that article ranking number six for its main keyword is that that website, let's look at its domain authority. That website has a domain authority of just one, okay? A DA1 site with only eight articles on it is ranking number six for one of the main keywords that we were going after. All right, so let's take a step back for a second, just talk about domain authority or DA, just in case you're not familiar with it, okay? So DA is a metric created by a company called Moz. And the whole idea here is it seeks to measure how good and how many backlinks that your website has, right? And it goes on a scale from zero to 100. So if you have a DA of zero, it usually means you have no good backlinks or you just started your site or you haven't done any SEO on it whatsoever, right? So a, a site like my brand new niche site that has a DA of one, it's a brand new site. I haven't done any link building. There's only eight articles on it. It doesn't have any links whatsoever, okay? That's a DA of one. It's on the very low end of the spectrum. On the other end, it goes all the way up to 100. So you'll see huge websites, right? Like NerdWallet or Bankrate in the personal finance space. They're probably in the high 80s or low 90s. And that means they have a lot of SEO authority. They have a lot of good, high quality backlinks. And now generally speaking, right? Just generally speaking, the higher DA you have, or the more high quality backlinks you have, gives you a better chance of ranking higher in Google. So it's definitely a lot more nuanced than that. And Google does not use DA when they do their rankings, right? DA just attempts to measure how good your backlinks are and Google uses backlinks. So to be clear, Google does not use DA in their algorithm, but in terms of DA, you know, the higher, DA you have or the more links you have, again, the better chance you have of ranking higher in Google. But obviously DA isn't everything, right? As proven by me ranking on page one with a DA of only one. But so many bloggers in all these Facebook groups are so obsessed with their DA, whether it's gone up or down one point. So DA, again, attempts to measure links and links are important, but I wanna show you how it's possible to rank on page one, even if you have a really low DA. So there are really three things that I focus on to get articles like that on the first page of Google with a really low DA. The first thing is being really niched down. The second thing is doing really good keyword research. And the third thing is creating really good content. So let's talk about those three things. All right, so number one is niche or being niched down, okay? So the more relevant that your website is to the keywords you are going after gives you a better chance of ranking, okay? So that keyword that I was going after, best chassis paint, right? It's a, it's a paint for painting your car, basically. Okay, so the keyword has to do with cars. And my site, my niche site, is all about cars, right? So my site is relevant 
to my keyword. And that's super, super important. And a point that a lot of bloggers overlook, they think they can write about anything and everything and that Google will just rank them. But having a, a zeroed in niche or a really tightly focused niche is super important. And then going after keywords that are relevant to your niche really, really helps you rank, right? Because if you think about it, if my blog was about backpacking through Europe and I randomly wrote a post going after a keyword about car paint, right? It wouldn't make a lot of sense. And Google can tell, right? Oh, this site is about backpacking through Europe and they're going after a keyword about car paint, right? You'll never rank in that scenario. And so that's why having a clearly defined niche and having keywords that align with that niche so you create content that matches up um, goes a long way towards ranking high in Google. All right, so the second thing I wanna talk about is keyword research. So having a process in place to be able to identify keywords that are relevant to your niche and that give you a chance of ranking in Google is super, super important. So most bloggers will just randomly write about anything. They'll, they'll have an idea pop in their head and they'll just write it on their blog, hoping that someone is gonna come see it. But when you're doing the, the right kind of keyword research, there's definitely a process involved where you wanna find out what your audience is actually searching for. What are they actually interested in, okay? So you do that kind of research and then you analyze the competition to make sure you, know, you have a reasonable chance of ranking in Google for that keyword. So when I was doing keyword research for my car site, you know, I took a couple of days to really go through it, find out what my competitors were ranking for, find out what questions and topics that people in my niche were interested in reading about it. And then I made a huge list, a huge list of potential keywords that I could write about, okay? And then I analyzed those keywords one by one to look at the competition. Who else was ranking on Google? Was it all huge authority sites or were there any low or medium authority sites in there? Which gives me a signal that I have a chance to rank alongside them as well. And then once I have that list of keywords, I can prioritize them from low difficulty to high difficulty. And then I have my list, right? So here's my full list of 50 or 100 keywords and we're just gonna go after them. We're gonna attack them one by one. Do the first keyword, write a post for that, and move on to the next one. And, and the more keyword ideas and topics that you have, obviously gives you more articles to write. And the more articles that you write, generally speaking, gives you more chances to rank in Google. And sometimes it is a numbers game. So where you can, if you can write 100 or 200 articles, you're gonna have a much higher chance of success for making money with your blog than if you only have 15 articles on your site. And that's why keyword research is the most important part of doing SEO. It not only allows you to cull a big list of topics that you can go after, but it gives you the tools to kind of analyze those keywords and see, you know, do I have a chance of ranking, right? It's never an exact science. There's no way anyone can assure you or tell you, yes, you're gonna rank for this keyword, no, you're not gonna rank for that keyword, right? No one can ever tell you that. Google is much, much more complicated. Their algorithm is very complicated. So there's no you know, black and white line when it comes to ranking, but we can do an analysis by looking at the competition to see, all right, I have a, maybe I have a decent chance to rank for this keyword, so let's put it on our list. And then just attack those keywords one by one and just be really, really persistent about publishing your content. Speaking about content, okay, keyword research might be the most important part of SEO, but content is the most important part of ranking in Google. So your content has to be really, really good. It's one thing to have that list of keywords, which means, okay, we can go and write about these things, but then you actually have to go and write about them. And your content has to do a lot of things, too many things to mention in this short video, but most of the things are the most important things that I look for. You know, you've got to hit your user intent or why is the reader searching for that article and then craft your article to hit that intent. You want to have your content be user friendly, easy to read, short paragraphs, bullet points, headings, right? Those kind of things that make it kind of easy to scan your article, right? We don't want a big wall of text that nobody wants to read. The third thing, which a lot of people miss, is we want expertly written 
content, right? So for, for this site, I've hired someone who has experience writing about cars. He has experience writing about repairing your car or maintaining your car. He's quote unquote, an expert, right? I don't know anything myself about cars. Now I could do the legwork and study up about car maintenance and car repair to get to that quote unquote expert level. That's definitely something you can do. If you wanna start a niche site in a niche you're not necessarily familiar with, you can become an expert by learning it, right? You can totally do that. For this site, I wanted to do it a little faster, so I hired out the content. And so it's it's quote unquote expertly written, meaning that the author knows all of these turns of phrases. He knows everything about this topic. And so if you look at the actual piece of content that's ranking, right? So the best chassis paint, right? So this is quote unquote, an epic piece of content. It's gonna cover everything you would wanna know about this kind of paint and present it to you in an easy to read, digestible manner, right? So I'm gonna give you right at the top, oh, you're looking for the best paints? Well, here are the three best ones. In case you don't wanna read this whole article, here are the three best ones. And then we're gonna give you kind of a list post of the top seven, you know, kind of a summary of each paint, right? Talk about writing about boring topics, um, why we like them, why we don't like them. And then after that, we're gonna try to cover this topic or subtopics as comprehensively as possible, right? So why do you even need this kind of paint for your car? What are sort of things you should consider before buying this paint, right? And then we'll get into related topics, right? How do you actually paint your truck frame? You're gonna buy this paint, but how do you actually do the process of painting it. And then let's talk about some alternatives. If you don't wanna buy a chassis paint, well, here are some alternatives that you can look at. And then let's answer some FAQs, right? How long should the paint last after application? Do you have to prepare the truck frame before pairing it? So on and so forth. But the idea again is that this is expertly written content it's not just me babbling on and on about paint, having no idea what I'm talking about. Again, I hired a car expert to write this content and I really do think that can make a difference in getting your content to rank. Now, I'm not saying every article that's ranking on the page one of Google for every keyword is written by an expert, but it, it helps get that content out. If you're outsourcing, I definitely recommend going with a subject matter expert just because it will be easier for them to write that content and I really do think that the content comes out better because it's written in that expert voice and not just a novice voice. All right, so just to recap, you know, how did I get on page one of Google for one of my primary keywords on a brand new niche site that only has eight articles and a domain authority of one? Number one, I have a very focused niche. I'm really dialed in on my niche. It's all about car repair, it's all about car maintenance and Google knows this. And so all of the keywords that I go after are gonna be relevant to my niche. Number two, speaking of keywords, keyword research is obviously incredibly important for SEO. We wanna come up with a huge list of potential topics that we can write about, analyze them by the competition, and then kind of sort them in preference by, you know, do I have a chance to rank for this keyword? Let's put it at the top. Number three is actually writing the content. So we have our keywords picked out. Now we have to go and create that content, make sure it's user-friendly, expert, expertly written, matches user intent, all of those good things about creating epic content. So I'll just say this about domain authority. A lot of bloggers focus on domain authority and that's totally understandable because SEO people like me are always talking about domain authority. Just remember, domain authority is not used by Google. It's only used as a proxy for how good and how many backlinks you have. Now we know Google uses backlinks in their algorithm. It's one or two, one or two most important ranking factors in Google. So links are important and DA attempts to measure your links. So that's why we pay attention to domain authority. But I hope this can show you Domain authority is not the end all be all. You can rank 
on page one of Google with a new site with less than 10 articles in a DA of one. If your niche is good, if your keyword research process is dialed in, and if you create really, really good content. All right, so if this video gave you some hope that you can rank on the first page of Google, even with a low DA, then do me a favor, smash that like button and leave a comment below. Thanks guys.